Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we spotlight Jeep Swenson's Bane from the movie Batman and Robin. It's another episode of Batman Movie Villains, and we've now reached the final rogue of the Burton Schumacher era, namely Bane, played by Jeep Swenson in Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin from 1997. In the movie, Bane is actually Antonio Diego, a convicted serial killer serving a life sentence. He's somehow been acquired by the mad scientist Jason Woodrow, played by John Glover, who uses Diego as a test subject in his experiments to create a super soldier. Woodrow fills the convict with a serum known as Venom, which transforms Diego into a massive hulking beast. Dubbed Bane by the scientist, Woodrow plans to auction him and the serum to the highest bidder. However, this never comes to pass, as Jason's dead colleague Pamela Isley, played by Uma Thurman, resurrects as Poison Ivy and murders him in revenge for killing her. Ivy then frees Bane and uses him as her bodyguard and henchman. The hulking beast follows the supervillainess wherever she goes and also aids her in a twisted scheme to take over Gotham City and turn it into a tropical jungle filled with mutated plants. Oh and yeah, they're gonna freeze the city too, cause Mr. Freeze in the movie. So in Batman and Robin, Bane is really just a henchman. He's basically Bob the Goon from Batman 89, except with more muscles and nowhere near as cool. In the comics, Bane is a mercenary who's both physically strong and highly intelligent. He's an intellectual, well-spoken mountain of muscle. For this movie, they just took the mountain of muscle part and ran with it. Not only is he not particularly clever, but he seems pretty damn brain dead. He can barely speak and will only occasionally say one word, like his his own name. Bang. He also does whatever Poison Ivy tells him, without question. So yeah, he's basically a zombie. It's never really explained why Bane is so devoted to Ivy. Is it because she freed him? Did she use her pheromones on him? Would that even work on the clinically brain dead? Does anybody care? I think it's pretty obvious the only reason they put Bane in this movie is so that they could sell more action figures. I mean, he is a toy company's dream come true. A large beefed up guy with a cool looking mask. Someone at Warner Brothers saw an issue of Nightfall and said we gotta throw in this guy somehow. As for Jeep Swenson's performance, it's not really much of a performance. He just grunts and like I said occasionally says one word. His face is also completely covered by that mask throughout the entire movie. So yeah, not much acting going on there. But of course, Swenson wasn't an actor anyway. He was a professional wrestler. And with the way Bane is portrayed in this movie, that's all you needed. A big beefed up guy. As for the visual design, I actually don't hate it. Yeah, I bet you didn't expect that. What I mainly like about it is the mask. It's a pretty faithful adaptation of his comics mask. I hate it when a mask has holes for the eyes, mouth and nose, like it did in the animated series and the Arkham games. It looks so goofy. This way Bane looks far cooler and more intimidating. You know, that may be the single positive thing I've said about the Batman and Robin rogues. As for the rest of his costume, it's alright, although I could have done without that spiked collar. I don't really like that his skin is green though, but I get it, it's supposed to be the venom coursing through his veins. In conclusion, Batman and Robin's Bane may look pretty okay, but I have to say that he's probably the worst live-action adaptation we've gotten of a Batman villain, at least technically speaking. He's not really the one I personally dislike the most, as Bane isn't one of my top rogues. But if you make him dumb, he's not really Bane at all, is he? It's like making the Joker unfunny. He's supposed to be the massive juggernaut and the master strategist. That's all I really have to say about Jeep Swenson's Bane, which means that this is the end of an era. We've now covered all of the Burton Schumacher rogues, and it's finally time to move on to the Nolan rogues. And with that said, next up on Batman Movie Villains, we'll be taking a look at Liam Neeson's Ra's al Ghul from Batman Begins. So stay tuned for that. And remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.